I swear, these get better every single time. Ladies and gents, welcome back to another budget build. Today's PC is focused on 1440p gaming in high settings while looking damn good doing it. This entire build will cost you just over the $1,100 budget, but that is including the white power supply cable extensions and the CD key, which totals $35 together. However, these are optional. So if you remove them from the parts list, the total is actually $1,066 and 17 cents at the time of making this video. But you already know, your boy EdSource loves a good looking system, so I couldn't pass up the cable extensions. As far as the CD key is concerned, I picked it up from yourcdkey.com. Using the code TS20 knocks the price down to around $15, and the same code can be used for Windows 11 keys as well. After checking out, they sent me the key within a matter of minutes, so all I had to do was go into the activation settings of Windows and put it in to get rid of the nasty watermark. You know what else is nasty? The segue into today's sponsor. Meet the Soundcore Liberty 4 NCs, the only earbuds on the planet with the strongest noise canceling experience. These little guys block up to 98.5% of noise making them the perfect on-the-go earbuds for your daily commute, travel, and they're perfect at the gym too. This is possible due to the adaptive ANC 2.0, which detects noise and creates a new sound filler curve every time the user puts on the earbuds. But that's not the only reason these are awesome. Crystal clear highs, pretty good mids, and a decent bass with impressive battery life of 50 hours of use with the charging case and 10 hours without it on a single charge. The Liberty 4 NCs also come with six built-in mics, IPX4 water resistance, and are available in five colors. If you wanna pick one up, links are down below. Okay, let's break down the parts and why I selected them for this budget, starting with the CPU. The reason why the Ryzen 5 7600 was the best option was because of three reasons. Number one, it performs practically the same as its direct competitor, the Intel Core i5 13600K, while costing $100 less. Number two, it's the best CPU to future-proof the system since it's running on the new AM5 platform. And as we all know, AMD doesn't kill off their platforms as quickly as Intel does. And finally, number three, I went with the non-X version because of value. Does AMD really think us gamers are idiots? Like why are people still buying the X variant over the non-X? You guys do realize it's practically the same performance. The extra 4% FPS gains from the 7600X does not justify the outrageous price increase. $31.78 to be exact if you buy from Newegg. Just stop it AMD. Just stop. Please. Stop trying to be like Intel. You're better than that! If it isn't already obvious, I didn't go with a cooler again this time, just so I can save the extra $30 and put that towards other components like a one terabyte M.2 SSD. But I did end up taking apart the shroud to paint it in white so that it matches the color scheme. If you guys wanna know how I did that, I'll link a video below where I show the process from start to finish. The stock cooler, believe it or not, is still sufficient enough to keep the temps down while preventing the system from thermal throttling, which you guys will see in the gaming benchmarks later in this video. So it's not required to buy a beefier cooler. That option is entirely up to you. But if you guys do wanna add a nicer cooler for your system, I'll drop a link to a few options I recommend down below. The motherboard I went with this time is the Gigabyte A620M. While it doesn't support overclocking, it does pack a lot of useful features for only $100. I talked about future-proofing the system earlier in this video. Well, with this board, you are covered for all CPU upgrades on the AM5 platform. This means all Ryzen 7000 series CPUs are supported and Ryzen 8000 series CPUs next year since they are all on the same socket. You also get four DIMM slots, so you do have the option of adding two more memory sticks in the future if you like. And it even has onboard USB-C, which is great because the case we're using also has a front panel USB-C port. But you do get an extra USB-C connection in the back as well, which is nice. If RGB gets you moist down there, this board has got you covered with two RGB headers on the bottom. You get one five volt and one 12 volt header for all of your RGB needs. But since the case comes pre-installed with four RGB fans, we did end up using a five volt RGB header, which worked out in the end. Memory was a pretty simple choice. The team group Elite Plus was the best pick for the price coming in at just $38 for a 16 gigabyte kit clocked at 4800 megahertz and CL40 timing, which works right out of the box by the way. No need to go into the BIOS and enable XMP. 
you get the 4800 megahertz frequency by default. Storage wise, we're going with a one terabyte M.2 Gen 4 SSD once again. However, this time it's from Levin, which had a better deal compared to the Crucial P3 Plus that I normally go with. You get insane read and write speeds thanks to the Gen 4 interface, and it's compatible with the PS5, which is nice. For the graphics card, we had to go with the for the graphics card, we had to go with the brand new RX 7800 XT from AMD, which offers the best price to performance compared to anything that Nvidia has to offer currently. Once again, solidifying the reputation that they care more about gamers than their money hungry counterpart. The 7800 XT performs better than the RTX 4070 in 1440p, and even with the price cuts from Nvidia recently, it's just not enough to justify buying the RTX 4070, especially since you get four gigs of VRAM more with the 7800 XT. Now, if you're an NVIDIA fanboy and you hate AMD with a passion, then sure, go team green. You know, it's your money, it's your choice. But if you must go NVIDIA, I would pick up the Gigabyte WinForce or the MSI Ventus since they are the only fairly priced 4070s out there. I'll drop a link to both down below if you guys are interested. But for the price of only $520, the ASRock RX 7800 XT was the best pick for our budget, especially with the color scheme, since it blends right in with our build and it saves me the effort in having to paint the card. I mean, look at this card. It's absolutely beautiful. Powering the system is an 800 watt gold certified power supply from Apivia, which is plenty to support any additional upgrades that you have for your system. The only downside is that it's non-modular, so you are stuck with the black cables, unless you go with extensions, which is what I did with this build. The ABN01 cable extensions are hands down the best looking cables for the price because all the connectors come in the same color and so do the cable combs. And finally, the case. This is the centerpiece of this entire build. This is the Sama AR01 RGB. And I know what you guys are probably thinking right now, Ed, this is just another Lian Lee O11 dynamic ripoff. You're not wrong. That's exactly what this is, an O11 copy, but at a fraction of the price. In fact, you can save another $13 if you go with the black option. Either way, you get a beautiful glass on glass micro ATX tower that comes pre-installed with four 120 millimeter ARGB fans. I mean, the fans did come pre-installed in the wrong position, which apparently seems to be very common from these Chinese cases. They have it all set as exhaust. So I do recommend flipping all the side fans so that they are set as intake. The only downside to that is now you're able to see the ugly sticker and the cables from the fan. Other than that small, tiny nitpick, I freaking love this case. It's got so many cutouts, all in the right places to help you with clean cable routing. Even on the power supply shroud, there is an extra cutout in the front, giving you the choice in how you want to route the PCI cables from the GPU. You can run it through the back, or through the front, which I think looks the best. Speaking of cables, the cables come in the same color as the case. And I'm not just talking about the fan cables, but the entire set of the front panel cables, including the connectors. The connectors are also in white, you guys. Like who does that? Bless your heart. Sama. I truly love the commitment to the color scheme here. Now there is a corner support bracket that comes shipped with the case just for safety reasons. However, just like the O11 series, it's optional and can be removed to achieve this beautiful glass on glass action, which I think looks stunning. Another thing I absolutely love about this case is that all the panels are snap off. You don't have to deal with any annoying thumb screws. In the back, you have tons of room for cable management and the case comes pre-installed with a fan controller for all four of the fans. You just need to plug the five volt RGB cable into the five volt RGB header of your motherboard and then plug one SATA power cable to the fan controller and you're good to go. Now, if you guys wanna add in more fans to this build, you can do that. You just have to plug in the fans directly into the fan header of your motherboard or you have to buy a fan controller separately. Just keep that in mind. For storage, it supports quite a bit of drives. On the tray in the back of the case, you get support for either two SSDs or one hard drive. And in the front, you get the option of mounting two more SSDs or one hard drive. So the case can support up to two hard drives or up to four SSDs. The front IO ports come pre-installed on the side by default. However, you can switch the position to the front by simply removing two screws on the bottom and relocating them. Personally, I think it looks way better in the front. Once again, the entire build will cost you $1,101, including the CD key and the cables. And if you guys wanna build this exact same PC, I'll drop a link to all the parts along with a build guide that will help you build this PC from start to finish. Now, on to the benchmarks.
bruh. I mean, do I need to say more? I think the benchmarks pretty much speak for themselves. Another impressive gaming PC that looks just as good as it performs in games. Pushing over the 200 FPS threshold in 1440p high settings across most games, with the exception of the more demanding titles like Cyberpunk and Starfield, of course. The GPU temps did exceptionally well, staying under 63 degrees Celsius on all the games, while the CPU did see temps of up to 92 degrees Celsius, which is to be expected using the stock cooler, but it did not affect gameplay whatsoever. There was no thermal throttling, no stutter, and no crashing, while staying very quiet overall. Come on bro, kill him! Idiots! Like I mentioned earlier, picking up a CPU cooler is optional if you want to see lower CPU temps, but it's not going to affect your gaming performance in any way. The only hiccup I experienced with the build is that you can't control the RGB lights from the fans using the software, despite connecting the cable to the RGB header on the motherboard. Gigabyte's RGB software is just atrocious, right next to MSI and ASRock. The only way you can control the lights from the fans is by using the button in the front. And this can get annoying really quickly, cycling through the dozens of color options that are available. If you guys wanna build this exact same PC, I'll drop a link to all the parts down below, along with a video that will show you step-by-step -step on how to build a PC from start to finish. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the build, guys, do toss a like before you head out, and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Adios. Why did I say adios? I don't know.